Hi everybody, Joe here again. You know what that means? Grab yourself a brew. Although I do believe in certain parts of Canada that means a beer. So I think we'll go on the grab yourself a, a brew as in tea or coffee. Or maybe a little hot chocolate if you're that way, if you fancy hot chocolate today. And don't forget your cheeky biscuit. So it's time for us to have a catch up. And um, I haven't seen you for a few days. So how are you keeping? How are things going? So come on in, take your coat off. Let's have a sip, let's have a chill, let's do some crafting together. Do you know what? I can't wait till I can say that to my friends. Come on in, take your coat off and let's have a catch up. How lovely will that be? But do you know what? Until then, we can just do it this way. Now today, I've got a lovely project to share with you. And this is in answer. I've had quite a few different questions about different techniques um, from various people. And I'm going to bring them all together my best way of answering things sometimes if i don't answer you on, on youtube and thank you very much for all your comments questions and for following i can't believe it's lovely that you subscribe so thank you so much and um, if i don't answer it might be i can do a video to answer the questions so we've had a couple of questions one about the stenciling and as you know you know i love to do corner to corner i have a thing about diagonals and I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. Um, sometimes we do put stenciling around the whole of a design. That's fair enough. But I do like to just keep some of that white space somewhere for the eye to rest. So we're going to incorporate that. I've had a request for one of the cards I did where Pippin sat on these lovely glow flowers. So we're incorporating that. As always, my favourite, I know we shouldn't have favourites, but this meadow grass stamp, the one that I use again and again. And what's lovely is I keep seeing it on a lot of your work. So um, you obviously love the stamp as much as I do. But again, it shows you if you've got a stamp you love, by all means, use it. Um, and we're just going to use one colour of uh, Versafine Clair and one distress, distress Oxide. Because again, I've had it was such lovely feedback when I've done the getting back to basics. So for this, we don't need a great deal. Um, I'll go through the products as we use them and what I'm doing and why. But also, I'm going to introduce you to the, the chalk pastel pencils. Now, those of you that follow me will know my husband, Carl, always ask me at Christmas what would I like and I go for something in the craft industry I'm a bit tight I don't like spending money even on craft things if I've got something that will do the purpose um I don't buy just if a you know it's made by another company but it does the same thing um I think a storage as well you know I don't need hundreds and hundreds of, of ink pads if I've got one that will do do the job so I always like to go for something a bit different. Now, last Christmas, well, the Christmas before, it was the Ink Tense pencils, which, as you know, I love. I use them again and again. So I try and choose something I haven't used. And I went for the oil pastels and the chalk pastels. And he bought me a set of chalk pastel pencils. And I've used those to add the colour to almost try and keep the monochromatic effect, but give a bit of depth. He knows I love using my charcoal pencils for shading. So he thought these will be a good a good product. And you know what? I love them. So again, a few ladies have asked how I use them. And again, I'm afraid I've not looked it up. Now, I apologise again. I am not art trained whatsoever. I just go with what I like. So all I can do is share my thoughts with you. And hopefully it'll give you a starting point so you can go and craft. So if you want to craft with me, I've just used a piece of card 5 by 7 um, just because that's, um, I get two, to be honest, out of my A4 when I cut it down. So that's in the all honest truth why I choose that size. And I just think it works well. Um, a couple of stamps, you don't have to use the same ones. Um, if you want to, by all means do. And again, if you need to pause this and go and get your, your stash. But the colour of ink I want to get to, obviously I'm using the Nocturne to stamp. But the ink I'm going to use, sorry, looking at my arm, you don't want to look at that, do you? Is Speckled Egg. Now, lovely, lovely colour. And as you know, I did quite a lot of work with the weathered wood a while ago. Now, the speckled egg is becoming a great favourite. And that's all I've used. I have got a slight brownish tone here because I've been using pumice stone, which again is another fan. And I've got to be honest, it was on the end of my brush. But, you know, it never worries me if that happens because, OK, I've got a browner tone here. Doesn't matter. I love the mix of the tones. So don't ever worry. I mean, I've got to be honest, to clean my brush, I just get a bit of kitchen roll and do this. And like I say, if I get a mixture of tones on my work, just go with it. I think we can be far too precious. Well, that's my excuse anyway. So 
let's get ahead. So I've got a piece of card cut and I'm got, as you know me, I'm going to do my stamping first. So I'm just going to grab my magazines and my copy of paper. Now I'm just going to shuffle my copy of paper because all my copy of paper seems to have... See if I can find... Oh, do you know what? Professional as ever. Now, as you know, I don't edit my videos. I'm sorry, you get me as though we are literally crafting together. So... I'm afraid if you want professional edited, you might have to go somewhere else. <laughs> Obviously, I don't want you to do that, but I just think it's nice if we can craft together. Um, so I've managed to turn my copy of paper over because, like I say, I just keep it. I don't know about you. Why throw something away? It's only if I've been embossing that obviously those little bits of embossing powder get everywhere. So we're going to start and we're going to use the glow flowers. Now, as always, remember, with your Lavinia stamps, and these are all by Lavinia, um, you've got the acetate, the printed acetate, and that gives you an idea of, of when you, you place in your design, should you wish. Now, we're going to use the larger glow flower first. And I must admit, mine could do with probably a wash. I have used these a lot and they're not exactly sticky. Now, as always, I'll try and check you in shot. You know, I have to turn it sideways again. It's that quirk of mine. Well, I'd like to say one quirk. As you know, I do have a few. But... I'm sure you have them too. And that's what makes us human, isn't it? I'm not a robot. <laughs> As you know, far from it. So, nice light tapping. Again, I've got it on my acrylic block. And you know me, I don't like to put it central. So, I'm just going to go slightly off centre. Only because if it's central, it would annoy me if it wasn't perfectly central. You know, it's got to be. So, for me, I just think it looks nicer off centre. Now, it's not a silhouette, so I don't have to leave it too long, but it is nice. We always say this, just give the ink time to soak into the card. A lot of the time, if you're nervous, if you're new to stamping, and I've had some lovely emails off um, ladies and gentlemen that are new, because sometimes I think we can forget what it's like to start off. If you're nervous or in a rush, you just want to pick your acrylic block up too quickly, and then it's worse because it doesn't always stamp well. So give yourself... A bit of a just give it a couple of I know it's we say it but it, it is worth it give it a bit of an oomph and then lift it up and there we go worst case if you had missed a bit you can use your black pencil your black fine liner pen you know just fill it in it's not the end of the world I'm going to put mine back on there now this lovely little one we're just going to just tilt the head slightly. I love this. It just, for me, gives movement. As you know, I have a thing. I don't like my flowers looking like soldiers on parade, all standing in a row. Because my garden, they're not like that. Well, they might start off like that. A touch of wind and... Uh, <laughs> sounds bad, doesn't it? Touch of wind. I should say the weather. <laughs> but they look more natural if they just have a bit of movement in them. So we'll put one each side. And again, give it a good bit of oomph. And then we'll just tilt the head the other way and stamp the other side. So how are you keeping anyway? How have things been since we last popped in and had a chat? I hope you're keeping okay. I must admit here we've had a, a few a few upsets this week. I've heard of a, a few of my friends that have either lost husbands or um, a few sad incidents. So it's um, unfortunately I've been sending a lot of flowers and condolence cards out, which is, is never good. Um, so I, I do understand if you're struggling and, you know, it, it is hard. When life's hard, you do think, well, to be honest, like giving up, don't you? I'm sure we all have those thoughts, but... That's why it's nice to come in and just craft a bit. Just have a chat with a friend. Have your coffee. Or treat yourself to a hot chocolate. Oh, with marshmallows and whipped cream. <laughs> I'm sure I had calories on just by doing these. But we all know it's lockdown that's made my clothes shrink. Not me that's put weight on. So we're okay on that score. There we go, and I'll turn it round just so you can see. I mean, this in itself, I, I just love this. And, you know, you could just go with this if you wanted to. You know, you don't have to finish off the whole design. 
just so nice to have a, a starting point, isn't it? And if you've got these, I must admit there's a single glow flower that um, I haven't got, I haven't used it, so I think I might have to put an, an order in. So um, Tracy, you'll be hearing from me soon, because I do love these ones. Now we're going to plant Pippin on the top. So I'm going to turn it this way again. And I'm going to ink him up. Now again, I'm trying to be good. I normally put my acrylic block on my card. I've got a very bad habit of doing that, but I'm trying to not do that. Because if my acrylic block's got ink on it, that's how you can get those black marks. And we all know what it's like when those black smudges appear. Now I've just overstamped him a bit. Naughty Pippin. Right, so I'm going to see you. Now you might see my head, I'm sorry. I'm just going to plant him. I quite often put him on the mushroom, as you know. But I just thought the glow flower's a nice change, isn't it? I think I might have put him a bit higher than I did on my original, but it doesn't matter. So again, he's a silhouette, so let's give him a bit of time just to soak in and see if we can get a nice crisp image. Yes. Lovely. And he's just planted nice. He's got quite a bit of space, look, to sit on. So that works really well. Now, for the top one, I'm going to use this. I don't use this often, this whimsical wisp. And I thought this time of year, obviously, there aren't leaves on the trees here. So I'm thinking that, just dangling down. Now, we have got a leaf, which is perfect. That little leaf, don't lose that. Because that, you can either add your leaves or, as I say, you just use it on its own and you can build up a lot. As you know, I'm a big fan of the pound stamps. Now, because I'm just going to add some stamping at the top here, I'm not going to put this on a big acrylic block or ink it all up because I only need the bottom bit. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. You know what I'm like by now, this dreadful little, little tickle. It's getting a bit of a pain, especially if a night, but we're not complaining. Right, so I just want to give Pippin something that he's looking at. So let's put the first one there, just above where he's looking. And because I want to work on the diagonal, I'm going to add some more here. So we'll just add a couple more. Let's just have a look. Let's have a longer one. I know, let's go on that shape. And then maybe second generation. So a second generation is where you do your second stamp. So there's only, I always think, half as much ink. So it looks paler. That's good because it gives you depth. Now, I just want one more here to help with that, um, that diagonal feel. And I'm going to angle it this way across the top. So that when I look, I've got almost that corner. And I like that. I'm happy with that. And again, I'm just wiping my stamps. You can use a wet cloth. I've got some biodegradable wet wipes. So, again, I know we have to be careful of the environment. So mine are biodegradable. But I'm afraid I'm somebody who... I do have to clean my stamps, you know me. Now, what I want to do is just... You know I have this thing, another one of them quirks. I just want to... I just want to add a little bit for... Just a little bit to ground these. And again, I'm not going to overthink it. Just finishes it off for me. Again, hmm, that's just my head. I must admit, it was raining this morning when I woke up and when I took Eric out. But now it's beautiful. We've got beautiful blue sky here. It's a sort of day I want to go and garden. But it is a bit wet underfoot. But it's certainly starting to get more and more like those garden days when you can just go in that garden. And my bulbs are just coming through. So, really nice. Does just give me that feel-good factor. Now, I'm just going to go up the side here. Because, again, I want to go on this corner. Just for that diagonal. Now, let's just have one here. Let's go a second generation there. I love this grass. When we walk Eric down the lane, you know, it's like this grass, it's there all year. So I know, right, if I angle that that way. Now, as I'm talking, I just want to look at the balance. And the best way, I don't know if it needs one there, look. So what I can do is find, oh, where I put it, the acetate that I've got. And let's see. Yeah, I think it would look better with, I think it just balances it. Don't you? I think it looks a bit empty space there, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. I'd go quiet then for a minute while I thought. 
So we just want to catch it slightly. I don't want too much. There we go. And that, for me, just balances that. I'm not going to do any more. I don't want to overcomplicate it because I love the way, as I say, when I go down the lane and we see the, the grasses and they're there all year and they just look stunning. And when they get the frost on them, when they get the dew on them, oh, absolutely lovely. Little droplets of rain, just perfect. I always think it's one of those stamps that I class it as what I call it a non-sexy stamp. You know, it's not the stamp that you'd look at and go, oh, that's the stamp I really need. But you know what you do? Because I use it so much. And like I say, it's an all year that. And your meadows, well, you know I love my meadows. Right. So what we need to do is block that now. So I'm going to just... Because obviously, if you use your VersaFine Claire and it's a slower drying ink... I'm just going to give it a good rub and then hopefully that'll give it a good blot and what we're going to do now is we're going to bring our ink into play so that's our stamping done so we can move that out of the way and we're going to bring this lovely speckled egg now if you don't have speckled egg if you've got stormy sky or faded jeans or you weathered wood they all do the same sort of thing you just get different color tones don't you and what we're going to do first is our stenciling. Now, the stencil is called Glory. And the reason I like to stamp first, for anybody who's not watched one of my videos before, is because now I can see where my stenciling is. It's just the way I like to teach it. And what I'm going to do is this stencil, I want to look as though it's coming. I love the way it almost looks like the leaves are coming down. But if possible, I don't want to put the ink over, over Pippin. So if I put it here... I can actually see where I want. So I'm going to load my stencil brush up and I'm just going to start lightly using my stencil and obviously go in the areas where I want. Don't go over the edge or you'll get a line. And I always like to sort of smooth near the edges. As you see, I'm just avoiding pipping. Now, if I just want to see how much ink I've put on, remember, I'm holding it with one hand, lift it up. Oh, I think that's enough. I don't think I need any more. I'm just going to add this little bit here. And what I love about this, you know, I have a thing about circles and orbs. It's got little circles in the design. So if I lift that up, can you see? I love the fact it's got these circles. Now, for me, that almost looks like the, the leaves flowing down. And like I say, I've not gone on the bits where I don't want it. I've got that nice white space there and there. So we're going to do the same thing, but with the opposite. Now I'm going to turn it round because this way I want the leaves to flow up almost to meet that side. So I'm just going to, and I've got to be mindful. I come to about here and here, don't I? So let's load the stencil brush up again. I certainly want that one and that one. I'll just concentrate on this corner first. Yes, I like that, but I need a bit more over here. That one there, I like that shape there. Let's have a look. Yeah, now I like that. What have I got? No, I don't want to do that one. I want to leave a bit of white around there, so I'm happy with that. So I hope you, hope you can see that. And again, we've just got that nice stencing in the background. As I say, lovely, lovely colour tone. Now, don't forget, with the stencils, again, it's just dawned on me, um, I had a message from a lady of how to do this technique. Now, we'll have some ink on there, but I'll just put some more on, just to show you. I'd forgotten, um, I'd promised to say about this. I'm going to spritz it. I'm just going to take it off camera, because... Obviously, you don't want to see me spritz. Now, obviously, depending what colour ink you've used, the deeper the colour, the better this will look. It's a great way of cleaning your stencils, but you can just literally put your ink on your stencil because you want to do it. And then all you do is pat it dry. And again, the longer you leave it on, let's lift it up. Oh, you're going to like this. your extra bonus you two for two for one look at that i'm just going to give that a minute i will show you close up i'll just clean my stencil i'm 
because there's still a tiny bit of ink left on there. And again, remember with your stencil, it's got a front and then turn it over and a back. And again, try and go, this one hasn't got any bits that lift up, but try and go in the direction of the bits that, you know, lift up. Right, so that one's glory. It's now been filed on the floor. And this is our piece, look. Look at that. I think that is just the most gorgeous piece. I mean, is it just me? You know, you could decoupage, you could put it... I mean, I'm just thinking one stamp here. But that, in fact, I... <sighs> I can't believe how good that looks. Oh, I can't wait to use that. Right, that's my extra one for later. Right, come on, girl, concentrate back to this. So what I'm thinking we'll do now, let me check this is dry. We're going to add some ink around the edge. So I need my mat to be dry. So for this, I'm going to use my smoothie. <clears throat> and I need some kitchen roll just so I don't get finger marks. And I'm going to start in the corner and always start in the corner because for me you want your corners deeper and then take your egg egg <laughs> your ink down the side that's because it's got a speckled egg although I must admit I keep calling it speckled hen when I lived at, with my parents we had hens and we did have some speckled hens so sorry Sir Tim I know it's speckled egg I'll try and keep remembering it's speckled egg it was quite funny my mum and dad used to show poultry so we had to do the thing of um getting the birds and washing them in the kitchen sink and then we used to have cages up in front of the fire and drying them and oh used to have to put stuff on the wattles and the lobes and the legs so they look shiny and oh, it's a total different world it really is it's amazing right so we've got this nice border now a couple of other things we want to do I want to put our moon mask on. Now, I must admit, I have just bought... Here we go. <clears throat> Lavinia now do acetate circle masks. As you know, normally I use a piece I've cut out myself. But you can get these lovely circle masks. And I've just acquired some. So, well, bought. When I say acquired, I, I bought them. Don't go thinking I've just... Um... <laughs> now, my little tip with them is I always put... And I've just put red Posca pen in the middle of this one. Let it dry. Because for me, when they're on my craft mat or on my table, I lose them. So for me, if I've got that little red, I've less chance of losing it. And we've got different sizes. We're going to go for this one. And we're just going to build that sort of halo around Pippin. And it just fits perfectly. Look. Now, again, always onto your acetate and then flick. Now, we get, we're using the same colour. So it's all tone on tone. And try and build up the colour. If you see there's not much, just have a check before you add more. Because often there's enough. Sometimes I have seen in workshops, if ladies are going to go wrong, they're going to add too much to start off with. So again, lift up and have a look. I think we can have a little bit more. But just gently, gently build it up. And you will get a feel for how much ink you're actually moving around. And obviously you've got the ink on here, so use that. There. I'm happy with that. Maybe a little bit there, but actually I think I quite like that, that subtle look. Now, I'm just going to wipe my moon mask because if I don't, I know when I pick it up next time, I'll get inky fingers. So I do try and have good habits. Now, the other thing I bought when I got those was we've now got acetate hill masks. So we've got these, look, hills and mountains. So, like I say, I'm trying to answer quite a few questions in one go. And a couple of my workshop ladies asked about these. So I said, right, I shall purchase them and have a go and tell you how I get on. Now, this is where we'd use our torn copier paper. So I'm just going to line it up. Look, I've decided which bit. That's a bit bobbly. So that bit there, I think that bit just fits nicely there. Again, in the ink, the same ink. And as always, on... Now, I always start below... Um, in this case, the glow flowers, because I know that's going to be darker because we're going to have shadow. So, because of that moon mask. So, and then go either side. As it gets paler, either side. 
bit more. Start off when you've got more ink and drag down. And I want to drag some either side as well, getting paler as I go out. Again, I can lift that up. Obviously, it's not as flexible as you copy your paper, but it is flexible still, yet we can see, and I think that's enough. But again, just give that a quick wipe. I know I could just put it aside and wipe it all later, but I'm sorry, ladies and gents, I have to clean up as I'm going along. That's me. So I like that. That's subtle enough. Now, what we're going to do now is paint. And what I like to do is, if possible, use this ink here. But I've got to be honest, speckled egg is such a light colour. I'm going to add some to my mat. And I just want, as always, my brush is in the water pot. And I'm just going to grab some of this colour. Now, you've used a permanent ink, haven't you, to stamp your glow flowers. So we know that we can go over the top. And we're just going to add some light colour because the thing that I've discovered that I love to do is use my chalk pencils over the top of when I've coloured with ink and water. I'm really into watercolour painting at the minute. I mean, the ladies in my workshop group, bless them, um, I must drive them mad because we seem to be, every product they ask about, I seem to find that I can watercolour paint with it. But I just find it so relaxing and so quick and easy. I mean, obviously, I love my, I love my Inktense pencils, but this is just another way of being able to quickly add colour. And this, I just want this background colour. Look at that. What I do want to do is just pick up with my fan brush, which is in my water pot as well, pick up some colour and just add some flex. Now, again, these, they're not going to be in your face. And I'm not going to overdo them, but if they weren't there, I, I would notice they weren't there. And it's the same colour, tone on tone. I don't want anything too in your face. And here we're doing lot. that's plenty. Here we're doing lots of techniques that are just, we've done them all before, but we're just building up this beautiful, delicate, but very stylish piece of artwork. But hopefully we're learning a few little new tricks as well. Again, nothing too taxing though. So we'll clean that up. And what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to put my heat tool over this because we're going to add our colour next. And I just want to check that it's dry. There we go. Getting worried then, it wouldn't switch on. So again, when you heat from the front, just always heat from the back as well. Perfect. So onto our chalk pencils. So I'll show you. This is, I've gone for a Stabilo box. Um, and it's just 36 chalk pencils, lovely, lovely colours. Look at that. It's like being in a sweetie shop, isn't it? So what I've done is I've just got myself, to go tone on tone, I've just got myself, I needed the white, but I've just gone, because we're using speckled egg, and if you bring it in, it's sort of a bluey grey, but it's got almost a greeny tinge, so I've just gone for these three. And what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm just going to highlight round the moon. And I'm just going to go in with the blue, first of all. Now, they are blendable, these, because the chalk, like I say, with my charcoal. Now, normally with the charcoal, I blend with my finger. But I've got to be honest... I have these beautiful little, and these are blending pen nibs, and they're from my Pergamano days, when I was doing my groovy, my Pergamano. If you haven't got these, you can use, oh, it doesn't want to go down, and these are in a lovely little pot my friend Anne gave me, and it's really useful, and it just sits on my craft desk. You can use one of these, but I know these are environmentally friendly, so maybe some cotton wool on the end of a, a cocktail stick. 
But as I say, these blending nibs from Pergamano are absolutely brilliant. And what it means, but what I'm going to do before I blend, I'm going to add my white because I want to add the blue and the white and blend them together. So I'll show you what I mean. And then just with my little stub, and this is when I would normally use my finger, but I'm trying to be, trying to be good. And just go all the way around. I just want to, I don't want it to be too in your face, but I just want to give it a little bit more depth. Look at that. And I just think that highlights it a bit more. But what I do want to do is in this corner here, give it a bit of, because we're going for the depth at this corner. And again, back in with my white. Back in with my blender. Now, if you notice, I tend to hold the pencils in my hand just because I like, personally don't like picking them up and putting down pencils too much because I worry about the lead in them. So for me, I find it easy to always hold them in my hand and just take from one hand to the other. There we go. I'm happy with that. I think that looks lovely. And then what I'm going to do is just create myself some sh more shadow down here. So again, I'm going to go for the deeper colour. And then I'm going to add the almost the greeny colour. And then we'll go for the lighter blue. And again, there'll be a taller shadow in the middle, won't there? Because obviously that glow flower is taller. So I'll just use my little nib. Blend it down. There we go. Again, and I'm happy with that. It just gives that nice feel, as I say, without being too, too in your face. Now, to add colour, we've just put a little bit of colour here, haven't we? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit more. And I'm just going to go, not on all of them, but some of these, because again, you don't want to see me. But what I have, I've done quite a few samples recently and um, designs. And I'm so loving the fact of being able to paint with my Distress Oxides, which almost give a chalky finish, don't they? And then coming in to add extra colour. But like I say, I don't want it to be too in your face. I want to keep the integrity of this design. I want to keep it all tone on tone almost. So I'm just adding a little bit of this greeny colour. Now, obviously, the chalk is going to go over the black of the ink, but I'm happy with that because I like that chalky effect. I almost want this to look a bit sort of misty and, and magical and a bit like Pippin's just got up first thing in the morning. And there's a bit of a haze. It's one of those nice summer days. <laughs> Oh, he's got his gin and tonic. Oh, no, it wasn't first thing in the morning, would he? That was a silly thing to say. <laughs> Getting a bit carried away there. Maybe it's last thing at night then. Maybe it's the haze last thing at night. And I'm just going to use, look, my blending tool. And like I say, I don't want to colour all of these because I think that would almost be too much. I just want to give that hint of colour. That hint of, let me have a look how that's looking. And, and that's, if I suddenly decided, okay, I want a bit more depth, say, on this one. I could add a bit more of my darker colour and then maybe a bit more of this green colour at the bottom and then just blend that out. Now that probably grounds that a bit more but I like that, I'm happy with that. I think that's so pretty. Now really we don't need to do a lot else to that. Um, what we can do is we'll pop that back in there it's obviously just the highlights then. I mean, how, how quick and easy was that? I'm just not happy with this, you know. I'm just going to get my lighter blue. Sorry, it keeps it keeps looking at me. I think it just needs a little bit more, a little bit more work. And you know when something, if you're not happy with it, I just want to blend it out a bit more. It was almost looking a bit harsh. That's better. Yeah, that's much better. Had to bring the finger in, didn't I, just to do that blending. But yeah, that looks wispier now. I'm happy with that. Just got some on Pippin's nose. So again, just wipe that off, look, with a bit of kitchen. That's better. Yep. Yeah. Okie dokie. Much happier with that. 
So highlight time and it's time for the Posca. So again, shake the Poscas. They've got that ball bearing in, remember. Now we don't want too much. We're just going to have some white highlights. I still haven't bought myself a, a new little white Posca. So I'm afraid I've just got to pick the colour up. But so with your finer Posca. So a few ladies have asked, my fine one is a PC 1mm. And the one I use for my splats is a PC 5mm. So that's the difference. So, but as I say, I need a new one of these. It's run out of, of the acrylic. But rather than get one, I find I can just use the ink from my larger one and just pick it up and use the nib. Now, again, I don't want to do all these because I don't want it too much in your face. A little bit down here. Can almost look too much if you do every single one and on Pippin just a little bit on his nose and as I say again I know a lot of you lovely crafters love to outline Pippin which is great you're happy doing that by all means do that um we all go to to what we are you know we're here just to show you ideas and things and again it's like this bit if you don't like doing this bit don't do it so all I'm going to do is add some Posca splats here and what I'm going to do is turn it round because I want them here and if possible I just want to avoid pipping now you could mask him if you, you thought you might get him just let me dry up any stray you know what I'm like best was the other day when I ended up with Posca on my phone on the lens of my iPad oh everywhere right Posca pens back in the tin and there we have him. Now, I'll just put these to the side and bring in my finished one for you to see. Side by side, I'll just check you can see them. Now, the only thing I've done with this one is I've matted and layered onto black. And then on my backing paper, I don't know if you can see here, in this top corner, and again in the opposite bottom corner, I flicked some speckled egg. If you can just notice on the backing card, just, again, to carry on that theme of the diagonal, which you know I love. And to me, it just gets the backing card in connection with your whole design and helps to finish it off. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me. And I'd love to see how you get on. Maybe if you haven't got the speckled egg, maybe treat yourself. I, I think you deserve it. <laughs> if you want to have a go using a different colour again I'd love to see what, what you create I do love looking at all your work so as I say I hope you've enjoyed this our little catch up um, oh we spent a bit of time together today haven't we which is lovely so take care everybody thank you for all your messages and thank you for all your support honestly it does mean a lot now you take care everybody love and hugs from me bye for now